we're almost ready to jump into game two. In fact, we are. The draft's actually just getting started. Man, I'm good at this. How's it going, Dragon Drop? It's going great, man. Going great. How about you? All right. Grab some chocolate milk. We're ready to go. Excellent. <laughs> Only got a water. It's not quite as good. Oh. Well, eventually we'll get to that uh, chocolate milk status. <laughs> All right. A lot of the same, actually, three of the same early game bands, and a, again, Io being picked up. All of the same bands, actually, isn't it? No, I don't think Slark was in the first four. He may have been in a band in general, but I think they had. Ah, oh, shoot. Did they band? It was actually Slark, yeah. I am pretty crazy. much the same bands as I predicted yeah. in the last game. Don't and want to toot my own, ho my own horn, but. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sometimes it's just. I mean, when you call something as silly as it is as a caster and then you end up being right somehow it's always a nice feeling yeah. but yeah Chilly Willy they do re uh, realize that Tide Hunter Troll Warlord pretty damn good hero so they pick them up for themselves this time around Ten yeah mm. Five how is XED gonna kind of counter this like oh you took our Troll Warlord we'll give you one better what do you think you can do against a Troll Warlord and a Tidehunter effectively in one hero? Sum it up. You've got um, five seconds. Go. Oh, God, no. Uh, <laughs> definitely a BKB hero that can kite the Troll Warlord, I would say. Um, hmm. Maybe Storm Spirit. Just throwing that in there. Can be a, it can be a good staple to a team in general. You're going to go with the Morphling for now. Uh, well, yeah, he kind of fits into that category as well. He does have a little bit of an escape, so you can cut, cut around the Troll Warlord, can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, can survive thanks to the uh, Essence Shift or whatever it's called. Yeah, but Support Morphling has been pretty active in the past week or two. Really? Yeah, I think DK and Empire have been running it quite a bit, actually, and it's almost been very successful. I think there's only... A couple games that went awry fairly quick, but I think Morphling's a little bit of an unorthodox support, and I don't know, XDD may not <laughs> like that idea. They just want to keep him with the load the shotgun type idea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I haven't been watching a lot of Dota recently, so that idea is completely new to me, and uh, I don't know if I even like the idea. I mean, sure, yeah, I guess you can get a pretty decent stun off. It would make him do very well, but it's, there's, I, I don't know, it's probably playing a support to a much better in that capacity than a Morphling would be. Definitely. Ah, uh, let's, Axe is actually banned out, which, I mean, Axe is super strong right now. I think he's just a super strong hero in general, you just, you really have to fight him and him alone, and then the rest of the team that actually take a team fight. Yeah. An Axe who gets out of control early, who is just playing Axe like he's supposed to be played, like super manly, skipping creep waves, having some support behind him, and the IO can definitely provide that. Um, and perhaps I'd really like to run uh, Axe Dazzle with a friend, and that's Rex every single time if you play it right. Um, Axe always has the problem that he does fall off later, but since you already have a Morphling, you kind of got that base covered as well, so. Axe would have been a good choice for XDD if they wanted to go for that, but of course it's banned out now. Yeah, and Vengeful Spirits actually make the debut in this series. Venge is a very strong support this patch, and I think she's probably going to be for a while. It's going to have to be a pretty extreme nerf, but the armor debuff and the ridiculous stun, the ultimate, the S she's just a great hero all around. Yeah. It's one of these supports that provides a lot of extra damage on her own. Uh, just with the Magic Missile being a very good nuke. Not the best stun, only at 1.75 at max level. But with the Magic Burst from that and the Wave of Terror being the armor debuff that it is, providing so much extra damage, even in the early stages. Um, yeah, very good support there. And later on, with the Nether Swap, any sort of tool that allows you to reposition uh, someone on the other team, be it a Ventral Spirit, be it uh, yeah, other heroes that would do that, but maybe be a Pudge with the hook. Things like mm. that 
can really be super super useful in the later parts of the game if you can if you manage to pull it off if you manage to find the right positions to execute that definitely definitely and it looks like morphling might actually fall into that support position doom probably gonna end up taking priority farm i think um, maybe yeah i the next couple picks will be invaluable if they don't pick up another support then definitely morphling is actually going to be played as a support. We'll have to see how it works out. Yeah, I'd be very curious about that. Oh well, Chili Willy, you know, try to find something to, to play around this Doom. Although, Titaner's going to have a difficult time landing an ultimate, and I think Venomancer may have a bit of an issue here too. Then again, you have to take one or the other, but Doom can do a great job at keeping Venomancer and Titaner pretty insignificant in fights. Uh, I don't know. wouldn't necessarily say that about the Venwans at the very least, because Venwans is one of these heroes that uh, comes in, drops the ultimate, and then is pretty much done, right? So if you don't yeah. boom him up, up right away before you before he gets the ultimate up, then there's no point in dooming him, ap him after the fact, because, right, what, what's he gonna do? Throw a couple of right clicks, throw a ward or two before he dies, inevitably? Uh, it's, it's kind of one way to deal with Doom. Pick heroes that have ultimates or abilities in general that, uh, that are high cooldown, high impact, that, can, that you can cast very quickly before uh, the Doom can get you. So Venomonster definitely fits into that, so it can definitely work out for them, I would say. But it's always, it's always a little bit chancy, though, since you have the Venomonster and Eventual Spirit now. If they, if you run both of them as supports, then both of them are going to be very, very squishy. And they don't provide, they do provide a lot of damage, but not a lot of lockdown. I mean, you do have the relatively short stuff. Probably a good slow from the Venomancer, but that's about it. That's a great counter pick from XDD. I think Rubik. There's a lot of spells on this uh, playing field right now that are very well rounded for him. Uh, a troll warlord ultimate, uh, Ventral Spirit. All, all three of those spells from Ventral Spirit can be used pretty effectively by Rubik. Venomancer rewards, maybe not as great of an idea, but the ultimate on him definitely. And heck, even Venomous Gale is a great pickup. Tidehunter, I think Ravage and Gush are the two main ones you're going to be one looking for. But for the most part, Rubik in a position where there's more good spells than bad. I think that's yep. a good place to be. Definitely a good pick once again here and. We've seen Rise on Rubik in the last game and he was displaying an absolute great play from yeah, from the beginning to the very end. They're always getting the clutch telekinesis is off. Getting a couple of good spell steals as well. So no surprise to see them going back to that that hero as well. So, so it doesn't mean that it's not gonna be a support mod thing. <laughs> yes. Sadly I was wrong. And it is pretty sad because I really wanted to see it. I wanted to criticize it and judge it, but <laughs> now we don't get to. Alright, so I do assume it's gonna be. Uh, depends on how they want to play it. They can run a Doom offlane with Morphling in the middle lane and Rubik supporting another hero in the bottom lane. Or they can just run the Doom in that one position and pick, pick another offlaner here. Okay, the Chili Willy pick up the Witch Doctor, so it looks like a, uh, a core of Venomancer here. That's not surprising. X is super good on him. Plus, if you get a blink, excellent positioning. I think that's a great force to have. Tidehunter and Venomancer can honestly do a ton in a team fight just by themselves. Yep. There's a ridiculous amount of damage coming up from the Venomancer Ultimate, and if you get a good setup here from uh, the Ravage as well to make sure that you can hit a lot of heroes. Not even to mention the Death Ward from the Witch Doctor, who's uh, also providing so much more extra. There's a big potential for yeah, a lot of easy team fights with Chili Willy here if they manage to line up a couple of spells properly. So that means we're gonna have to, we're gonna be seeing some BKBs on Doom, Morphling, and probably this fifth pick. Yeah, they definitely need those. I mean, Doom can take out maybe one of those heroes. I mean, Witch Doctor's not gonna have, have a nice time if you choose to focus on him. But yeah, Titan, the Venomancer, Ventral Spirit even to some... I mean, you don't want to do these puny little support heroes, necessarily. So, you kind of have, have, want to do the Venomancer and Titan, but if you don't do that before they get off the brick ultimates, then it's kind of a waste. 
can always do the troll warlord, but he's likely tanky enough to be able to survive that lap. Especially with the heal from the witch doctor as well. So um, this lineup I, I like a lot more than Chili Willy's lineup in the last game, I want to say. Definitely. I think they thought about what they needed to do, and it looks like they're out for vengeance. Wind Ranger are going to be the final pickup by XDD. Yeah, it looks like. Be David Adam, so it looks like mid yeah. and one position morphling off lane Doom if they stay true to their. Uh, to the well, positions that they had in the last game. Ace, is, Ace was mid on Bristle last oh, game. Oh, yeah, right. Right, of course. But I, I think Baby Knight would make more sense sending one Ranger mid against what probably might end up being the Venge. Not the Venge. The Venomancer. Yeah. Okay, Tor. Actually, no. He off lane, didn't he? Who went mid? Uh, Katora went mid, yeah, on, on Viper. Uh oh. No, it was Shadow Fiend. Uh, of course. Oh my god. Yeah, That's I. So stupid. I think. All right, don't don't beat yourself uh, up. You did get those spot on guesses with the draft. <laughs> it's, it's really weird. That's, that's just being rusty, right? Not casted in a while and then forgetting all the lanes. Because, I mean, in the last game, yeah, you had a Viper. Viper, pretty good mid hero in a lot of circumstances. And I did expect him to go mid before uh, before the Shadow Fiend came out, so that's where that's coming from. Ah. Uh. Um. But yeah, regardless. Yeah. Toka San was mid. He's playing the Troll Warlord, so that will probably be the decision here. Um, we should do the introduction now, just in case there's some early shenanigans. Which team do you want to go with? Who did you do last time? You did XDD, so I will do this time. <laughs> Looks like Doom's going to be played by Jalopy. Meanwhile, Bland on the IO again did a great job previously. Ace is going to man the Morphling. Baby Knight's also going to be a Wind Ranger and Rise on that feared Rubik. On the other side of the Wither, we've got GJW4M. Quite a mouthful to say here. He's okay. going to be on the Ventral Spirit. Tokasan, as mentioned, on the Troll Warlord. Probably heading toward the middle lane. Kaitora on that core Venomaster, Ralphie, to support Witch Doctor, to please Dante on the offlane Tide Hunter. Alright, and it looks like we're gonna get straight into this. I'm pretty pumped up. This should be pretty pretty big game, honestly. Chili Willy's got a lot to to save, honestly. This is the beginning of uh, JDL five, right? So yeah. is it this is probably both teams' first game. This is gonna decide they're in the top half of the bracket, the bottom half of the middle. And uh, Chili Willy really wants to make it so they're in the middle. Yeah. I mean, it's not the biggest deal. There's plenty of players to go ahead. So even if you lose to 2-0 to here, there's still a good chance to come back later on down the line. But of course, you kind of want to set the pace. You want to make a statement here in this first game. You want to get off to a good start just to be able to uh, have a good feeling more than anything else going into this new season definitely and looks like I'm not sure what uh, I thought Blame was going to be removing trees at first but no not really not sure exactly what's going on you, you got your pretty standard tri-lane bottom and uh, standard tri-lane top so it looks like Tokusan is going to be going mid no Kaorda is moving I'm too early to call. They're they're shifting too much. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see what happens in the lanes. Right now, it's a, it's up in the air. Io is. Io is going for the standard bottle rush, though. That's safe to say. And Takasan's going to contest this ruin. Although Bland, did he set up the perfect bait? Oh, that was dangerously close. You could see it getting pinged out. They were worried he was going to get telekinesis up on top of the ledge. Is that ledge? <laughs> Can you? Get on, yeah, I'm. You can get on top of that ledge. He was right yeah, here. Oh, that's dangerous. Was he though? Was he like here? You know no, what? I don't think he was close enough. Oh, I thought I he was. He Regardless, a uh, little bit of exchange here. Bounty ruin will be secured by the wisp. Who got the other one though? Uh, uh Dante. I don't have a dude. Yeah. Yeah. So no, it's going to be an aggressive try lane. Looks like they saw their options, and they rather have Jalopy and Dante duke it out top alone. This leaves, uh, I don't know. I think XCD is in a little bit of a position here. Uh, Kaorta 
can really dish, dish out damage and lane control with the wards. He didn't go with wards first. One of the Venomous Gale just in case he had to run away or secure a kill. But as soon as wards start coming out, it's going to be really difficult to get creep equil equilibrium anywhere near where they want it to be. Yeah. Definitely say that those are very good lanes for uh, Chilly Woolly here. I mean, this trident is actually super dangerous, with the, especially once these heroes all hit level 2. Yeah. And you have a little bit of a stun from the cask, a little bit of a stun from the Ventral Spirit Missile, and a good slow from the Venom Monster. Yeah, that's 50% slow. That's huge. Yeah. I mean, and those by itself, maybe not the most dangerous, but in conjunction with each, with each other, they're all pretty decent level 1 spells, so pretty decent level 1 heroes. If you get caught up by that, there's no, 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 no. not really a whole lot that you can do as a Rubik, for example, if Ryza gets caught out here. Maybe yeah. Maybe does have the wind run to maybe tie them over. But yeah. they definitely have to be very careful here. And top lane also uh, should be quite good here for the Titan, simply because of the anchor smash once again up against the melee hero. Well, I don't uh, drop you guys' hands on Shockwave pretty early. That's a great ability to have his Doom. I mean, he doesn't exactly have the mana to support it, but... Last hitting, phasing Dante out as best he can. It's more about the health region, though, I would say. And oh. now, Wisp coming in, well, he's going back with Resphere. Here. Also, a decent amount of damage. Dante Doesn't have one. a stun. He still could be enough fall. damage, though. Getting caught on the creeps. Oh, oh. Almost had it with the shockwave, but Dante, quick move into the woods, and that's going to save him. Not just yet. <laughs> Looking. Uh, wow. Being very aggressive to those trees. I don't think Dante's going to be hiding in there anytime soon. <laughs> Mid lane. Very close. Oh, that was definitely Dante living on the edge. Venomous Gale up on Baby Knight. He's trying to get out. He's going to drop the shackles. Stun lands just before Levitate comes up. But no. Will he fall? And yes, he will. Too many right clicks. And Encarta is going to take first blood. Yep, that was very nicely spaced up by Chili Willy here. They threw out the stun after Windrun came out, so the Windrun duration was kind of wasted here. Meanwhile, in middle lane, Wiz will go down to Togasan here and might get ace as well. Yeah. Not a lucky bash. He's morphing strength to yeah. survive, but he's going to have to go back to base now after this. No mana, no health. There he goes. Two excellent oh. early kills oh. from Chili Willy. But yeah, once again, they get off to a good start. The question will now be whether they can turn it into something better than last game. Yeah, definitely. They, I mean, they had a fairly strong start in the beginning last game. But just over time, Shadowfiend couldn't do what he needed to do. But now, the trolls in their court, they they have the option to go super late. And here's another engagement. Korda going to try to land on this rise. But Io's coming in. Magic Missile still might secure this. The armor debuff one right click away. Not going to be enough. And it looks like GW is going to fall in return. Rise very close to death. But just didn't have the damage to do it. And now Bland's going to get phased out. The wards are... Uh, the wards should have kept GW alive just a little longer. But wasn't able to get as many down as he needed to. And... Honestly, GW was just a little too far ahead. Definitely wanted the kill, but maybe wanted it too much. Yeah, I mean, uh, Bland really saved the day there, and... Yeah. They almost got the Rubik, but not quite. Not with the Wisp peeling him up. That's, oh, nice shackle here on Katora. Do they have enough follow-up? Doesn't look like it. Now Bland will eat a stun. No lucky bounce with us. At least not enough to make it into anything. But yeah, if Wisp wasn't there at the, at the time, the Rubik would have definitely gone down. So, still Chili Willy in a decent position down here in the bottom lane, I would say. Yeah. Last hits, Doom's dominating. He's winning lane against Dante fairly easily, and I think that's that's a great position to be in. He actually went with Mana Burn now. I'm not sure how much of a dent that's making in Dante's Mana Pool. I don't know if it's worth it, but that's what he ends up going with. Morphling's coming in second, 25 and 15, and then Wind Ranger actually still holding on in this lane, believe it or not, which is I pretty impressive. I think that's a great job, considering what she has to go through. And XDD still holding it in, making it a fairly close game, although now they're going to initiate both stuns and Venomous Gale, but TPs are going to send them back. GW getting caught out again, and this time just going to melt. This could be another kill on a Korta. And are they going to be able to? Right clicks. 
Magic Wand's gonna come in just in time. Does Oh, the balls won't hit just yet, but no. Power Shot gonna finally do it. And now this is a return kill again. Rise taking some extra damage. Teleport's coming in, and they're gonna turn this once more. Bringing Witch Doctor back into them. Ralphie's just gonna fall. That was a great bait, and it's gonna put XCD back in the game. Another teleport coming from GW. Finally back to this bottom lane. They're gonna dime the bounty room and not let them take everything. That's three deaths from Chili Willy and none from XDD. That's a thousand gold going into this tri lane's pocket. That's unfortunate. Yeah, and it's just where the experience deficit, I would, I would say. I mean, it's showing a little bit. I mean, if you look at XD, you see Baby Knight, you see Rise, you see Ace. It's all here, uh, players that have been playing Dota for quite a long while here. They know what they're doing. They definitely know when to go for kills and when not to. Chili Willy might not be in the same position here, as they did miss the Gale to start off with here in the bottom lane. And then they still went for it. They still for both of the sons at the same time, trying to go for Windrunner here. And they over just straight up overextended there. Didn't have any spells left, and then with the support rotating in, uh, XCD was able to pick up a couple of really good kills here, and that kind of put the Baby Knight into a comfortable position right now. Two kills, third last hits. Gets caught out with the game yeah. now. Baby Knight, very slow. It's a 15 second slow, and the stun finally lands, but they can't exactly right click at this point, and no follow up stun, so teleport's just gonna happen pretty much instantly. Had GW been there, they would have been able to stun during the teleport and maybe make a little more happen, but not just yet. Rise is actually gonna be working his way down bottom now. Could be looking for another kill on this explosive tri lane. I think every single kill has been down here. No, there's been one mid. But still, that's five, and I mean, that's what you'd expect from aggressive tri lane, but XCD definitely making their mark pretty early. Yeah. Should be really, they, they must feel the pressure right now. I mean, the tri lane started off nicely, but that one, one team fight that they lost, or well, that skirmish down, oh my god. GW really caught out again. Magic Missile, not going to be enough. Yeah, Power Shot Shackles going to really set that up. That's the point where the opposing tri lane has plenty of plenty of farm, plenty of levels to deal with your early game heroes here. Even if it's a Witch Doctor and a Battle Lancer. Jalopy's getting caught out top, trying to deny himself, but uh, Tokusan just got too much damage, honestly, and Dante was there to ensure it happened, even a teleport from Ralphie. However... Ace is not going to let that go unanswered and going to take middle tower. So, not too much of a, uh, of a mishap. I mean, losing Doom's a big big deal, but at least they did make something else happen. At the same time, though, it's, Doom already has his Midas, has a max out Devourer. Even if you kill him once, he's still going to be able to skyrocket in terms of gold. And we already see it if we look at the net worth. Nine minutes in, 4,600 gold coins to the Doom's name. That is significant, to say the least. Yeah, all three heroes, all three main main chorus from XDD in a very comfortable spot, gold wise, financially secure for their retirement. And mm -hmm. the end game is definitely going to be a little, uh, a little questionable for Chili Willy at this point. I mean, Troll Lord's a great pickup, but if Doom is present and Morphling, then it's going to be difficult for Troll to make that big of an impact. Yeah. It's not like they don't have any late game damage, but the problem is they don't really have too much late game tank. It's only the troll ward really. Titans can tank up quite a bit as well uh, in certain situations, but they will they will really rely on the Ravage, and that's easily countered by BKB. Because Ravage is the only really big setup for a good Venom, uh, for good Venomancer ultimate, for good Witch Doctor ultimate. Which they will end up needing in the late Ooh. game. Doom's on Dante and tons of rope. Actually, the whole team's going to be... Nope, they're going to call it off. But that was huge mass teleport. And it's going to save Dante. Yep, and the Doom is wasted. At least they've got that for them. Yeah. Got that going for them now in the bottom lane. Oh, well, he's going to teleport That's bottom. He has right. Ravage, so could make this a kill on Raze and maybe Baby Knight. No stun, so Rise is just going to get straight out, and Baby Knight, gonna mosey on along. Oh, man. Chili Willy's desperately trying to gain some traction. Yeah, 
they're looking for uh, for something that they can't really find too much right now. Don't have the right heroes in the right place. I mean, they do start off with that with a stun, and after that, there's absolutely nothing you followed up with if the ventral spirit isn't there to interrupt teleports. And yeah, XDD recognizes that. Could be a little fight here. here. Yeah, Troll wants to get a little ballsy with Ace. Ace is desperately trying to morph, and he's actually gonna jet straight out, but. Looks like Togusan could be able to get out, but one right click. Why did he come back? Io was able to right click him down, and GW could end right here too if this last ball connects. Doom's present, and Ralphie's gonna meet his doom here. Meet his doom. Oh, I said that. Actually, no, Jalopy. Oh, quick rotate from Io. This will bring Io in a position to heal, and I don't think Ralphie alone can take out this Io. So. Oh! Oh, he might just take the Doom with him. Ace actually replicated straight back into the fight and got a hold of Witch Doctor. Oh, man. Building some space for Io, and that was a very, very clutch play by Io, getting that Doom out, and then being able to rely on Ace to take the Replicate. For not having a, a team currently, they're doing an excellent job. <laughs> XCD definitely making their mark and showing or just what extra experience can do. Gold, 7.5k, XP, 5k, towards the way of XDW, DW, <laughs> XDD. <laughs> yeah, they're being very efficient all across the map now, and they they know that they can't easily be killed. I mean, Blan is keeping close tabs on this friend here on the Morphling. Morphling, generally a hero that's very hard to kill anyway, much less if, if an IO is right behind him to secure skill. So there are just farming the enemy jungle like it's no one's business, whereas four heroes of Chilly Willy are grouped up here in the middle lane to just to be safe for any sort of gank attempt. Oh, Ralphie getting caught out. He's just gonna get melted down by Ace. Io didn't even really help there, just kind of, you know, stood for extra protection. Hey man, I'm here too. Yeah, and Ace is dangerously close to Lincoln's. All he needs is that uh, recipe. Actually has his replicate heading mid, so he could focus on this tower and then teleport. Not teleport, but uh, I guess relocate with that replicate to make it quick, easy play. Jalopy's actually following Rest of Chili Willing to the jungle. Not sure if he knows it's a bait. Uh, he's gonna back off. I don't know that he cares. I mean, even the Doom with the Scorched Earth is decently tanky here, even though he's only got four armor. No, oh, Baby Knight with the yeah. Inhist Rune. Let's see, Looking scout to find this out. Here. Is he Dante. goes just a bit too early, doesn't see the rest of the team behind him, and Jalopy's gonna fall very quickly. Baby Knight's running for life, but I'm not sure if they're gonna have enough. Gush is up. No, yeah, Gush just now came up, although Ace is here with Blon, so should be enough of a defense to keep him off Baby Knight. That, I, I think Baby Knight, yeah, Baby Knight was standing right here. Shackled the hero to this tree, and then the rest of the team poured out and just focused yeah. Doom. Uh, um, maybe not actually shackled the Venom monster down here. The shackle didn't latch. Really? Okay. Yeah. But yeah, a little bit too hasty in this instance. Now, Chili Willy is looking to set up for a tier 1 fight. They will find Rise in a tree line. Just and melted down. Well, two the very strategic, a bit. yeah, those are two very strategic kills, Doom and Rise, and that's going to start toppling the net worth graph towards their way just a little bit more, although, meanwhile, the tier 2 ace is doing exactly what he needs to do, but uh, Tokusan, not going to let that go unanswered. Doom's out on Katora and a relocate from Io, should be able to secure this kill, bringing ace with him, yeah, no doubt about it, Katora's going down, Dante, the target now. Lots of fight around him. Blink Dagger from Doom just to get Whoa. it there. Dante drops a quick Ravage and Witch Doctor there to follow. Gonna make Jalopy pay for chasing just too deep. That was such a clutch counter, counter engagement here from, from Chili Woody. I mean, the Ravage, and, but more importantly, the Witch Doctor there with a nice cask. Uh, bouncing between Doom and I think it was Ace. Who's, they were just lucky that Blan was still connected to the Morphling there and took both of them out with the relocate expiring. Yeah. Otherwise, they would have been killed uh, as well, thanks to the Death Ward and the stuns coming out. 
So one for one, although Ace could be cut out here. Tokusan being a little too ballsy. All right. He's all right. He's not too worried about it just yet. While all of this is happening, Baby Knight is happily farming away, not quite as far ahead as everyone else in the scheme. Gets the shackle on Dante and just his neck to ruin. But yeah, he has a Maelstrom. Also so, has a fat snake to clean up there. <coughs> uh, excuse me. Ancient's actually stacked twice. I'm not quite sure if the Windrunner will be able to take that. It's probably more for Morphin, I would say. Um, I know if you eat the trees, you can make a nice little window there and power shot them out so they all run away, yeah. run around, and uh, get a little antsy. You can just melt them down. But either way, Morphling really dominating this network chart. And yeah, he's I, just been mostly left alone as well. I mean, I, I don't blame Chili Willy for that. Simply because, as I mentioned earlier, he's really hard to kill. Yeah. But he's, he's going to be a problem going forward. And now we're going to focus on this tier 1 bottom. It looks yeah. like this should be an easy kill for Ace. Tower kill replicates up, so he could just stand there until there's an issue. Yep. I know that Chili Willy can defend this. They do not have the Ravage. Yeah, they only have three heroes. Although Witch Doctor's ultimate is up. If oh, they want. They. Do you see that? No. Teleport from there to there. Oh. Oh, poor guy. I think he, yeah. I think he wanted to blink, but misclicked. That is just salt to the wound here. Yeah. Ace, actually going to have to get out of here pretty quick. You may. Oh, he's going to run. He's just going to go straight for this tower. <laughs> no one's there. No glyph and that, wow, that was sneaky. And replicate straight out of that lane. That was a very, very well played attempt at uh, getting that tier one down, and it worked. Oh, more fight there. Dante got shackled. Not, not enough just yet. Regen ruin. Ooh, who's going to grab that? Yeah. <laughs> Io's got the bottom, might as well. Io's doing pretty well for being an Io. I mean, he's about 500 gold off of the mech, which I mean isn't that great for 20 minutes, but you also have to take into account he does have Tranquils and Urn. Yeah, he's actually super rich here. I mean, 4,700 gold, more than a lot of Io's can really, can really get sometimes. He's been very proactive with the relocates, definitely where the Io needs to be. Baby Knight just farming away up top it has a lot of space created because Ace is in the jungle so they're going to see any rotator attempt to gank from a mile away in fact now that we say that Chili Willy is going to smoke up and work their way top or no actually going to relocate where their focus was and looks like they want the Baby Knight definitely want something here they will find Baby Knight if he chooses oh. to stay oh, Baby Knight nice gets out back. swap in and uh, Tokusan is going to rotate in for a quick kill Ultimate from Ralphie being used. That's not that big of a deal, though. 80 second cooldown. Yeah, and then I'm going to take the stack as well. Just oh, Katora get getting cut out by Roachbait. He's going to get doomed and just destroyed. Doom has more than enough damage to do it, but <laughs> that's why Io is so rich. Unstoppable streak. Mech <laughs> able to be purchased now. Just a lot of gold. I still want to say that it was a good trade for Chili Woody overall. I mean, maybe not in turn. Well, of course, the fight recap doesn't show the death from the wind run anymore. But yeah, getting that kill on Baby Knight was super huge. Also taking down a triple stack here of the Ancients. Oh, here's uh, the Roche. Uh, Lifesteal is up on Troll Warlords. Tokusan is just going to melt this down. They do have the Medallion, and they do have Gush from Tidehunter. So more than enough armor reduction, and honestly, more than enough space to do it. Even though they might have had Vision. Uh, not a lot of XCD can do about it. No, you, you can't engage into the Titans in the Rush Pit without BKBs. That's not something that you generally do and live to tell the tale after the fact. Yeah, there's actually no BKBs coming out here. I mean, Morphling did go for the Lincolns and now the Ghost Scepter going for a shotgun. Windrunner working on the Dragon and Scepter. So, yeah. he's going defensive, so they have to try and play around the uh, Ravage in another way. Well, I mean, Ace was it. Yeah, so also means that Chili Woody should have a free ticket to Roshan. 
whenever they're all alive. Oh, this could be a tier 2 for tier 3 exchange. Ace notices them all 5 mid, and he's just going to make use of this. He already took the tier 2 top while they were taking Roche. So he's got more than enough space to really put a hurting on this tier 3. Meanwhile, tier 2 still struggling to go down. This is a lot of damage that they're going to accumulate at tier 3. Yeah. Gonna be happy to take that trade as well. Yeah. So Sam will have to teleport back to prevent any further damage. Still good for Chili Willy. And meanwhile, Baby Knight's bottom, you know, probably power shot this creep wave down and just make some space. I think lanes are being pushed in an excellent manner. Ace actually could get caught out here. Doesn't have a replicate, and he's farming the jungle. That's risky. Risky business. They're surrounding him. I'm not sure if there's anywhere he can go. He does have waveform. Ravage is going to be used just to kill him. Is it enough? Oh, the swap could have set up him. He's just going to waveform straight out through the trees and teleport. Lincoln's definitely doing some work there. <laughs> That's where you just go, say, morphling, and then you all make your fist into a wall and try to punch someone. Yeah, yeah. There was four heroes, five heroes, trying to commit on a morphling. Getting a god knows, uh, using god knows how many ultimates there. The Ravage, the Death Ward, but it was just not enough. Even without the Wisp coming in to try and help. And I, now Dante and Bottom take a lot of damage here from Baby Knight. Well, he's that's a, the strength of Morphling. I, that, that's why they went with the pick. I mean, he's just got so much just. A relocate yeah, thing here, Dante. Oh. Very low on health. He will, he will fall to this. Way from yeah. cross. Easy bait, easy life, says Baby Knight back at home. Yeah, I. Io and Ace have been really sticking together. Oh, Jalabi's is going to fall straight. Straight down on his face. It looks like Baby Knight's going to have to move in along with Ryze to try to defend or at least get a return kill. I'll stop this from being so much of a hurting. Uh, Bland's in the mid... Well, not mid lane. At the top ruin. Going to get his hands on that. Ruin, and it looks like they're going to focus more on this tier 2 mid. Ace is... Uh, he has the shotgun, I believe. No, nope. Shiva Guard recipe is coming on the way. He just has the scepter, but it is close to being an E Blade. And then, then he gets scary. Just got enough gold. All right, now, now this is this is a big issue. He's not going to yeah. be quite one shotting, but it's going to be a chunk of damage, especially on Troll Warlord. Or Veno, I think there, there's a lot of people he could just ch -ch bang, and they're gonna really take a hurting. Absolutely. Yeah, but he has. He, you go, you things go. he can play confidently as well up in the top lane. I mean, that's what he's been doing the entire time. And he can definitely do that simply because he always gonna have a replicate, even though that one is stuck in the trees for a little bit here. <laughs> Land gets it out. And yeah, this was also. Just the screen behind the screen size behind him. So if worse comes to worse, he can just come in, relocate to somewhere else on the map if the fight just breaks out, or just save him in general if they try to go on all things. So Ace should never ever die. And even if they go on him, he can just easily turn around with the help of the Wiz, blow someone up, take a fight on their own terms. After that, oh, here's another tier two for some tier three damage. In fact, it looks like XCD is going to be able to do a little bit of a contest here. Doom working his way there, but uh, for the most part, it looks like that's going to be it. And we're going to have three teleports coming back to this tier three, and Ace is quietly going to walk out. Tower nearing half health, and they're actually going to relocate on top of Tukasan. Is it going to be enough though? He did BKB up, but uh, Morphling going to expire the Aegis, and it looks like Venno's going to fall as well. Can they kill Tukasan a second time? Yes, the shotgun, doing mass amounts of damage. And he's just gonna yep. fall. Two for nil. Ha tier three top is down half health. XCD is doing an excellent job playing around the strength that this morphling offers. And Io is just making them so mobile. Both of them still on killing sprees. Yeah, that's Lance playing on the Wisp is really immaculate in this game. Uh, Wind Ranger really relocates right when they need them and just yeah. the right spots. Wind Ranger has uh, Ags on the way. So that's going to be even more damage just on this tier 3. 
Yeah, th there will be a time which is gonna be pretty damn soon, five thirty minutes I would say, where XD can just group up as five and switch down the tower. They still have to be careful about Ooh, oh, Shotgun oh, oh, hey. just demolishing. Venge. Back, yeah. Wow. That was that was insane. The Shiva's guard definitely set that up, but Venge just wasn't ready. Yeah, um, they're gonna be able to group up those five and do that. Just pick someone off before anything can happen. With the morphling, then replicate out, teleport back to base if you need to. I mean, they did force out the Venom Monster Ultimate there. That's an Axe Ultimate, so you gotta have to be aware of that. But I think XCD is, is in a good position to, that they're able to play around that, right? Yeah. They can they can play a split push game, Baby Night off oh, with nothing with Spoon. We'll find someone here. Jelly will throw out the Doom onto Dante, so no ravage for this fight. Tokestad pops the BKB, trying to do it again, trying to find a target that he can lock down. Not successful in that just yet. And now with the support down the drain, <coughs> has to run away. We'll do so for now. Ace making a very good presence that time, and it looks like they're going to be wanting to go on either Ralphie or this tier 3, or both. I mean, at this point, Ralphie does have his ult up, but... Not sure if that's going to be that big of a difference. They may opt in to push bottom or mid out dressing instead. Yeah, it's, it's only bland down here in the bottom, so it kind of won't have the IO in the, in the fight if you can. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, I don't know, it's still sub 30 minutes, so... Oh, uh, Ace was down at bottom with bland, and when they relocated in, oh, okay, bland okay. had to come back. And it looks like they're going to be... Oh, the shotgun! Demolishing GW! Barely making it out with any health from 1,000 to 83. Quite enough damage, though. But now Dante is back with a Ravage if he needs a nice shackle here from Baby Knight. Should secure his retreat here. Still on a hunt. Oh, the blink. No, Wind Run's up again, so... You should never be able to catch a Wind Runner like that. Definitely a great job. Problem, the wind runner, and Ace is at it again. Bottom tower, not gonna be able to withstand all of this. Even well, teleport. We'll bring Ace back just a little bit, just so we can line up the shotgun and maybe land a kill. BKB's out, but will it be enough? Takasan, Ace is taking too much damage. Yeah, he, he has to go back to base now, and they have BKB on cooldown as well. Down seven seconds. Now the tower goes down here. That's the last remaining outer tier tower. For a side of Chill William. Yeah, XED is just playing this out very, very well. There's gonna be a relocate where they're getting to, to the top lane. Dante, once again on the list. Just getting melted down. Ace is very proactive, uh, just rotating around the map, using his replicates and the relocates to get him anywhere he needs to be. Yeah. Oh, Rise is gonna miss Roche by just about a minute. That's unfortunate, and it looks like Ace is ready to go again. Misses the shotgun because of a quick swap, and Tokusan's ready to kill this ace. He says enough is enough, but Baby Knight's present, and there's just nothing he can do. Finally picking up a kill on Rise, but not going to be able to get ace. In fact, Tokusan himself may die. Ravage, quick clutch to kind of put a hurt on ace, but for the most part, it looks like ace is home free. In fact, he can take a kill on Dante if he wants. Shackle's going to land. All the ultimate from Witch Doctor could have set up a kill there, but no. Ace was present, ready to get the godlike. <laughs> that's that's unfortunate. Really crappy fight there once again. Which doctor was ready with the ultimate, but just the wrong time to use it. Yeah, ideally you want to have that after the ravage, but the ravage oh. was mm, even worse. Yeah, the wasn't wasn't really in a good spot. I mean, he caught two, I believe, but <laughs> on the opposite side, opposite side of the tree, so he didn't really, still didn't really have a good engagement angle after the fact. Tokusan was very low on health anyway, so he could uh, he barely survived that, so he had to go back to base anyway. There was no follow-up damage once again, apart from the Witch Doctor Ultimate, which if it would have been there, maybe they get a kill on Baby Knight. But then again, you do have the Wind Run uh, to deal with. You do have Ace, who is super dangerous and hard to kill with the amount of morphing that you can do. It's just really hard to fight up against us, and they don't want to anymore. Call the GG here. Wow, yeah, I mean... A 2-0 win for XDD. 20, 
100k gold deficit, and you've also got nearing 20k XP deficit. Didn't even have to take a Rax to end that one. Fairly quick. I think excellent plays by XDD. And you were talking about experience, and that definitely shows. Yep. So, uh, quick game, great execution. Wind Ranger, Morphling, Io. Just the all stars of this game. I mean, I don't want to detract from what Jalopy or Rise did, but I think the picks and the players were exceptional on those heroes. That being said, uh, Chili Willy actually put up a heck of a fight. I think they wanted to use the Troll Warlord like XCD did, but just didn't really have the backup for it. I think that a lot of times Troll was in there going ham, and he just didn't have the teammates he needed with him to do it. But great game by both teams. Absolutely. I mean, Chili Willy had some good ideas, but they just weren't able to execute it up against a team like XCD here with these well-known players who just, I mean, they just played a, a stock standard solid game. You could say just uh knowing what they needed to do and just executing it safely and perfectly that's kind of what uh, xdd did and you know it's all they needed to take quick a uh, relatively quick to a win here over definitely all right well thanks for coming out guys don't forget to follow it's been a great game tomorrow we're actually going to be on hitbox uh casting an abatu game not sure exactly who's playing. I'm sure Revo will be spamming it around in chat. So don't forget to watch out and uh, find out exactly what we're doing. Uh, but thanks for watching. It's been a great game. Uh, Dragon Drop, thanks for coming by. Glad yeah, to see you. Thanks for having me, man. Oh, it was, it was a blast. All right, we will see you guys later.